Hi, I'm Jagdeep Singh. I'm the co-founder and CEO of QuantumScape. And I'm delighted today to introduce Dr. Siva Sivaram, who just joined us recently in the new role of president. Uh, and he's gonna be managing our technology development and our manufacturing scale-up efforts, uh, which is obviously a critical role. And we're gonna talk to him about why he came here, a little bit about his background, as well as the key things that he thinks we need to do to go from here into mass production. So first of all, welcome to QuantScape. Thank you. We're glad to have you. Uh, as you know, we brought you on board. Your background was uh, extremely impressive. You've run multi-billion dollar companies that uh, ship millions of units per year uh, using very sophisticated technologies. Uh, and we think that actually could be very relevant to what we're doing. Before we start, tell us why you left your role as president of an $18 billion company to join a little startup here in that area. There are very few companies in the world that have the kind of impact that QuantumScape can have. The field we are operating in clean energy storage that is very, very important for the future. To have a broad-based technology that can transform this whole industry, a market that is very large, but most importantly, a group of people that I would love to work with. That's what got me excited about joining Quantum Skate. So we are at an exciting time in our own life cycle right now. We just announced the QSM5. As you point out, we're going to be doing all the things to ramp up to industrial production. But some of what we're doing is kind of doing two things in parallel. We're ramping up production while we're finishing the product development. What are your thoughts on that? It is cliche to say that innovation is the lifeblood of the company. And goes without saying we need to continuously innovate. But what we can't forget is the flip side of that coin is execution. Innovation without execution is just a pipe dream. We need to get into the mode of taking this innovation and converting into a product. And as we are promising things to customers and ramping, this train has to leave on time every time. Trains have to run on time for us to be able to get the products into the customer, get the feedback we need, and get to RAM. So it's important that we don't forget either side of it, innovation or the execution that needs to go with it. But tell us some more about your background and what you think the most relevant aspects are. I've been in the semiconductor or solar space for now close to four decades. The common theme has always been develop a brand new technology, take it to high volume, make sure Customer feedback is there, refine the technology and take it into very, very high volumes. I've done that several times in my career. And the last time I was with, with Western Digital, both solid state flash memories and with magnetic hard drives, it's a high volume manufacturing business. So we have to have advanced technologies that then need to very rapidly get into high volume manufacturing. So my background has always been in that space of developing technologies and taking into high volume production. That's sort of my sweet spot of what I'd like to do. So talk about magnetic storage. One of the things that always fascinates me is how magnetic storage today, you know, has uh, these uh, magnetic heads that float on the order of maybe five-ish nanometers above the surface of these spinning platters. And those platters are spinning at several thousand RPM. Uh, and the fact that you can do that without, you know, having head crashes and other issues uh, always blows my mind. Yeah, both in uh, semiconductor backend manufacturing or in magnetic storage. Actually, now that you talk about magnetic storage, what's interesting is if you scale that device up, it's like flying a 747 10 feet above the ground, near sonic speeds across the world over and over again. That's what we do. It is the most complex mechanical device ever built. Look at it, putting, putting 10 of these and manufacturing them every time. You don't think it is possible. What has happened is over generations you learn. You make a technology, refine it, take it to manufacturing, get the feedback, and you build on that knowledge. That's what's most relevant in any high volume manufacturing of such complex devices. And this has been done, obviously. Same thing in the solid state field. If you notice, most of the world makes uh, one dip, uh, uh, in the wafer surface. That real estate is very, very expensive. Silicon real estate costs $2 billion an acre. Hmm. We learned how to build skyscrapers, how to build multiple layers. We now make 300 layers of these devices. There's another place where when you are starting to build the same thing over and over again, how do we build it? What do we do in volume? 
I think all of these are very relevant to the experience that we'll be having at QuantumScape. That makes a lot of sense. So it sounds like um, specifically some of the things you guys learned around how to uh, keep very tight control of sophisticated processes, how to keep defect levels very low, how to keep uh, clean environments and so on, are all directly applicable. Exactly. And all manufacturing has some of these common elements, reducing variability, reducing external factors, reducing defects that are created by the manufacturing process itself or the metrology. How do we do this and how do we learn from them? Usually in manufacturing, it is not the absence of problems, it's how we respond to those problems that's most important. So you've been here a couple of months now, you've had a chance to see what we have, uh, you've had a chance to understand what, what we're trying to accomplish going forward. What do you see as the major tasks ahead of us that we need to accomplish and do well in the coming quarters and years? Now, I want to tell you what I'm very impressed with first before I go far. First is the quality and strength of the technology. It is a technology with sound science behind it and built up over time. The second is the depth of the customer relationships, how much we have done with customers, educating them, them educating us what they need, so there is a genuine interaction. The third is the development of the ecosystem, whether it is the supplier base in materials, whether it's a supplier base in equipment, putting these things together. So all these building blocks exist. But above all, the most important thing I'm impressed with is the people. Amazing set of people who are here, who know the technology and feel passionate about taking this to the next level. And I have to say, the team is equally impressed with your passion and your uh, emotional intelligence in terms of working with the team. You know, when you first came here, some people were unsure if you were to walk in here and say, okay, there's a new sheriff in town, let me tell you how it's done, boys. Uh, but in fact, what you did was you, you really um, did a lot of listening. You spent your first few weeks and months here walking the floor, doing a lot of one-on-ones with people, understanding where things were. And I think that uh, really built a lot of credibility and respect for you on behalf of the team. So that's actually great to hear. So given those observations about the company and where we are, uh, what do you see as our major goals going forward and how do you see us achieving those goals? So the thing that I see is we have spent a lot of time developing the technology. We have spent enough time developing the ecosystem and the customer base. It's now for us to turn the technology into a product. Turn the product into a high volume revenue generating something that the customer really wants. To do that, all the required steps such as building the infrastructure, training the people, building the equipment base that is needed, developing the volumes of materials that are needed, making sure that SOPs are written, making sure statistical process control comes in, making sure that dry rooms and clean rooms are operated properly. All of these we've already started doing. You can see many of these already in place. We now need to scale them up. We need to make sure there is enough of a scope for growing this further. And we need to make sure we are constantly getting feedback from the customers. So from engineering samples to customer samples to volume samples to qualifications to then starting to ship in volume. These steps have to be planned, stepwise, dealt with as we grow as a company. Is there anything you've seen that scares you? What scares me is the beautifully large opportunity in front of us and if somehow we didn't execute and because of us we didn't take advantage of that that's the one thing i don't want ever for us to do well Siva, we couldn't be happier to have you on the team i'm personally really excited about your contribution so far the team has been incredibly impressed with you at every level and i know you're going to make a huge contribution to our ability to uh, take this technology and scale it up to industrial levels and really as you said change the world a big thank you for giving me this opportunity. This is a once in a lifetime opportunity for us to make a company of this caliber into high volume production.